Caught me off guard again. Want me to go? Hi, I'm Giancarlo. I'm Felicia. And this is our preview of... It's preview or review? It's a review. It's a review. Right. <laughs> this is our review of the lantern. My brother gave up. He's like He's sitting on the couch. Down and He's like, like, I like these guys, it's anymore. hot and they keep f***ing up everything. Um, By the way, you gotta have to bleep everything because it's a family game. Families don't swear? <laughs> well, in Montreal, that's, that's they why do. I learned how to swear. Not in the You're States. Good. The Harvest Festival is about to begin. As an artisan, you want to adorn the Palace Lake with the most beautiful arrangement of lanterns and earn the most honor points to win. Place the dedication tokens of same color type in three stacks in descending order. Remove any four dotted one in a three player game and the three dotted ones in a two player game. Place the three generic dedication tokens in a stack as well. Form a pool of favor tokens. Depending on the number of players, you'll place a certain number of lantern cards of each color in stacks to one side. 8 cards for 4 players, 7 cards for 3, and 5 for 2. Determine the first player, given the start player marker, and place the starting tile with the red lanterns facing him. He'll receive a red lantern card, and the other players will receive a lantern card denoted by the starting tile facing them, either white, black, or blue, as well as the turn sequence card. These cards should always be visible to other players. Shuffle the remaining tiles and deal 3 to each player. With the rest, you'll create a drop pile with 20 for 4 players, 18 for 3, and 16 for 2. Place the remaining tiles in the box, and you're ready to play. Each turn consists of this sequence of play, and always in this order. Exchange a lantern card, make a dedication and place a lake tile. The first two are optional, but the third is mandatory. Exchange a lantern card lets you trade in two favor tokens and a lantern card for anyone available in the supply. Since no player starts with any favor tokens, this step will be skipped the first round. Make a dedication lets you trade in lantern cards for the top dedication token of the appropriate stack. These are clearly listed on the dedication tokens to easily remember what color is what type. When taken, you've just scored that many honor points, which are equivalent to victory points in this game. Notice that when you take a dedication token, the next one will have fewer honor points on it. So do try and complete the required sets fast. Should no one of the type of dedication token remain, you can take the generic one of 4 points. But since you only start with one lantern card, the first player will have to skip this phase as well and move on to the mandatory one. Place a tile. When doing so, a player must place at least one side of his tile touching another on the playing area. Now there are three things you need to look at when it's placed. First, see if there's a matching bonus, any side that has matching lantern colors. Then you'll need to look for any platforms. These are the square icons in the middle of the tiles with either the dragon, panda, lotus, or a pair of goldfish. For each of these platforms that touch or are on the placed tile, the active players will get that many favor tokens. Lastly, look at orientation. Like with the starting tile and starting with the active player and going clockwise, each player will get a lantern card of the color facing them from the placed tile. When done, the active player draws a tile from the stack and play passes to the next player. Before a player does their turn, there is an important rule one must abide. If they start their turn with more than 12 lantern cards in front of them, he must dedicate that turn or discard cards until he has 12 or fewer. Play continues until all tiles have been drawn from the stack and placed from each player's hand. When that happens, each player will have one final turn to exchange a lantern and or make a dedication. Players total their honor points from the dedication tokens and the player with the most wins. Should there be a tie, then the one with the most favor tokens between the tied players wins. Lanterns is quick, easy, flows well and does its job as a casual game. We liked it, but we only wish it would have offered more difficult modes for more competitive players. The reason why we say this is because with so many lantern cards available and favor tokens, top placement is a little less important. Not that it's not important, just less important. Every player seemed to always be getting a lantern card during orientation as players quickly got their dedication tokens and the lantern cards would be returned. Only halfway through the game were people not getting their lantern cards because the supply was low. We played with removing an extra card at two players, so the four of a kind token was harder to get, yet gave us more points. And that made the tile placement more interesting and the player interaction was elevated, which Lantern still has as is, 
but it seems more of a given than a tactic or strategy mechanism. So half a point there. They easily could have made a variant for more core gamers by using one side of the dedication tokens for the variant, a limited supply of favorite tokens, which again we had so many of, and less lantern cards or lantern limit in your player area. Now, that seems a little unfair to say, but the only reason why we're saying it is because we actually liked Lanterns. The game is well made from its wooden components, and the theme is well captured with its cute artwork on the platforms and vivid popping colors. Rulebook is well written, and the turn sequence cards have all the info. The game has a slight luck factor, and sometimes you're stuck with a handful of one color lantern tiles, so there are simply no matching colors on the board. Therefore, you simply got to play that tile, collect those lantern cards, and hope the next tile you draw will be better. We like that the score was always pretty close at the end, so as to keep player invested in the game. The game is simple and effective, and to me, it seems like it would be well received with families and or a couple chilling on their resort balcony on vacation. I don't know why I got that image, but there's this zen feeling playing the game. But it might miss that competitive edge for some gamers. For those who really like casual games though, Lanterns plays fairly quick that you can play more than one game and it will satisfy your needs. It gets 7.5 Lanterns in the Palace Lake out of 10. Come on. We got flack for like swearing. What? Uh, in the States? Ooh. By whom? Um, I'm sure he was from Texas. Well, we're probably Nashville. all of the Bible Belt. The Bible. Yeah, what's his name? The the Reverend that died. The who? The Reverend, the one that was like against everything, military, gay. Oh, did he die? That guy. Yeah. Like Phelps, the guy. Michael Phelps. Oh, he died. Right. I think that's his name. Michael Phelps. Yeah, he's dead. They had room for him in hell. Lucifer was. Uh, they had the, one of the best spots at the bar. <laughs> 